In this example, I'd like to calculate the force deflection relationship for a two-bar truss. And so I have a truss here with a horizontal member and an angled member. And node three of my truss is constrained to move in a slot, so it can only move horizontally. And it's good. I'm going to impose a motion delta, and my question is going to be how much force is required for this motion. Now I'm going to approach this problem using conservation of energy. So in this case here, the work in is going to be equal to the work stored. So the work stored is the strain energy in the truss bars. And the work in, in this case, is going to be 1 half P times delta. P is my unknown. Delta is given. And I'd like to use this relationship of conservation here. So to be able to calculate the work stored, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the kinematic expression. So I have two bars. So let me say sum I equals 1 to 2 of the integral along the length of each bar times one half the modulus and the area of the bars times the strain in each bar squared integrated along the length of each bar. So we'll assume A and E are the same for each bar and what I need to do is have expressions for the strain in bar one and the strain in bar two. And what I do know, though, is that the displacement at node 3 is equal to delta times the unit vector in the horizontal direction. So I'll call that EX. And what I need to do is first figure out what the change in length of each bar is. So let's say delta L1. Delta L1 is going to be the dot product between U3 and the unit vector that goes from node 2 to node 3. So in this case, because of the length's given, this is going to be delta over the square root of 2. And the change of length of bar 2 is going to be equal to u3 dotted with the unit vector that runs from node 1 to node 3, which is simply delta in this case. So this allows me to say what the strain in bar 1 is. That's delta L1 over L1. And L1 is equal to the square root of 2 over L. And we can divide this by delta over the square root of 2. So this becomes delta over 2L. The strain in bar 2 is delta L2 over L2. So that's going to be equal to, oh, sorry, that's delta. Yeah, actually, I had that right, delta L2. Change the length of bar 2. So that's delta divided by L in that case. So. I can now go back over here and write down my strain energy, or stored energy, 1 half AE. So for bar 1, I have delta over 2L squared times the length of bar 1, which is square root of 2L, plus 1 half AE times the strain in bar 2, that's delta over L squared, times the length of bar 2, which is L. So, And that's all equal to 1 half P delta, so I can cancel the 1 halves, and I can cancel a delta, at least in each numerator over here. So let's write this out a little bit more carefully. So we have P from the left-hand side, then each term has a factor of AE and a factor of delta, and then this is going to multiply in the first term here I have a 1 over 4 L squared square root of 2 times L. So that's got one of those guys will cancel. And then in the second term, I have a plus 1 over L squared times L. So we can factor this a little bit here. I'll have AE over L times delta times and then we have the square root of 2 over 4 plus 1. And if you want, you can simplify that a little bit. But that's the essence of the analysis. We start with the work in, and we set it to the work stored. And in this case, we use the kinematic expression for the work stored, which is the integral with respect to the strains. 
and we use the Kinemaxis system to calculate what the strain in each bar is by using the unit vectors that run along each bar to project the known displacement in the system.